So this is basically what you need to carry out this experiment. You need a stannous chloride solution, a dish to hold it in, some alligator clips, some paper clips, and a power source. Each of the paper clips will serve as an electrode, and they're clamped to either side of the dish using the alligator clips. The dish is then filled with a few milliliters of 2 molar stannous chloride solution which I made in a previous video. I'll provide a link to the stannous chloride video in the description. Then to the power source, an alligator clip is attached to the positive and the negative terminals. The moment the circuit is completed by connecting the second alligator clip, the crystals should start to grow. The crystals will grow from whichever alligator clip was attached to the negative terminal. So after it was attached, we can see the crystals starting to grow. It was very interesting for me to see this the first time, but I was honestly quite underwhelmed at how slow it was and how few crystals were growing. I was very underwhelmed with the results, so I decided that I'm going to need to use something with more current if I want to get the crystals to grow faster and to get more of them. The crystals are pretty small, flaky, and fragile, but if you like, you can scoop them up and collect them. So I found an old power supply from a laptop I used to have. I cut the end off and stripped away about an inch of the wire on the end. The free copper wire that you see wrapped around the inner white wire is generally the negative or the ground. So it was removed from the white wire and twisted up a little. Then, with the white wire free, a little bit of it was stripped to expose the inner wire which is the positive. So now these are going to serve as our positive and negative terminals instead of the battery. And then, just like before, we attach an alligator clip to each of the terminals. In general, the wrapped wire is positive, but depending on the polarity of your adapter, it could be negative. In the end, it doesn't really matter because it doesn't really matter which side the crystals grow from. And then, to get things going, we plug it in. So now when we use this much more powerful power supply, we can see that the crystals are growing much faster than before. However, due to the greatly increased power input, it starts to heat up the solution, and you can see that the solution on the red side starts to actually boil a little. So what's happening here is known as a redox reaction. Basically what happens is that the tin ions are oxidized at one end and reduced at another. So the stannous chloride starts off as tin 2 plus, but at one side it receives electrons and at another it gives away. At the positive side, tin 2 plus is giving away two electrons to form tin 4 plus, and at the negative side it's receiving two electrons to form tin 0 or tin metal. Just for fun, you can reverse the terminals so the tin grows from the other side, and you can see that the existing tin crystals start to shrink. Because this solution's already been used extensively, and it's pretty hot, the demonstration isn't the most beautiful thing ever. But in essence, what we're seeing here is the tin metal is giving up two electrons to form tin 2 plus or tin 4 plus, which can redissolve in the solution. I opted to redo the experiment with better lighting and indoors, and the result was much nicer. The crystals grew very nicely, and I was quite satisfied with the result. To end the video, I'll let this play out in real time. 